Okay, so I don't really do gear videos. I don't really do gear reviews and all that kind of thing, but I am gonna talk about tone today. And the reason why is that this is something that a lot of people get wrong. We're gonna talk about live tones, modeling amps, and also why there's a lot of inconsistencies in your live playing and some good tips to use um, for this. So first things first, Fletcher Munson curves. If you don't know what a Fletcher Munson curve is, I would recommend Googling it, but I'm gonna try and give you a very simple explanation. It's a very complicated EQ curve for the human ear. Your ear does not pick up frequencies at a flat rate. It is more sensitive to certain frequencies than it is to others. However, this gets even more complicated because of the fact that that changes depending on volume. So what happens is as we increase the volume of whatever signal your ear is uh, picking up, your EQ system that's filtering that, sig that signal into your brain is actually changing. And that's really, really important because this changes the most in your bass frequencies. This means that if I dial in a tone, and I'll play you a tone right now just so you can get an idea of what it might sound like. This is my, like, just a, a thing I've got on a, a modeling app with no, um, no EQ adjustments to it. And if you listen to this through headphones, it sounds something like this. Okay, now this should sound relatively well balanced to you. Like that, there's not, there's nothing here that's like too bass heavy. You can hear the bass frequencies, you can hear the mid frequencies, you can hear the highs. Hopefully, if I go onto my bridge pickup, you know, we get something like this. It doesn't sound that egregious. Any one of those different. Um, ranges in the frequency distribution um, curve, right? There's no like bass spiking here, there's no mid spiking, no high spiking. That is gonna be an absolutely garbage life tone, what I've just played there. And the reason being is that you can actually hear the bass already when it's on headphones. Uh, so you can already hear the bass quite clearly. If I now turn this up, all you will hear when I put this through a live, it's impossible for me to do, um, you know, on a camera or anything like that. But I can guarantee if I put this tone through a camera um, on a live gig, all you'll hear is bass if I was playing live right now, which I'm not. And that's a real problem. Basically, the thing to take away here is that the bass frequencies change the most on the Fletcher Munson curve. So as you increase volume, your sensitivity to bass increases vastly and it's far more than anyone actually considers or thinks about. This causes a bit of a problem with your live sounds because what most people do is they might turn the bass down a little bit. They might be like, oh, I'm just gonna turn it down, you know, um, just, a, just a touch so that when I turn up my, my live tones, I'm not gonna have too much of a problem. However, that is not going to be enough because as soon as you turn that up to stage volumes, you're still gonna be way too bass heavy, way too heavy in the lower mids as well, potentially in that kind of like maybe uh, 300 to 400 free, um, hertz range. So what you want to do is almost completely obliterate the bass from your live sound. And I'll show you an example. So this is my, just to, for reference, this is the same amp um, settings. I've just got a, a, a really aggressive frequency um, so EQ curve on this. So this is my amp with no EQ curve. Different pickup. And now I'm going to turn it back to. There we go. Oh, that's on. I'm going to turn it onto the one that is now uh, my live setting. Hopefully you can hear the difference. Bridge pickup. So this now, to um, hopefully to the listener's ear through headphones, does not sound that good. It sounds like I am missing a lot of bass response on that signal. And um, you know, you might if you're playing a solo guitar show or something like that, or you're you know playing solo guitar through headphones. Sorry, you you, you might want more bass than that, right? It's, there's barely any low, low end on that at all. As soon as you turn that up, that is going to be really well balanced. And so the way to think about um, as a rough ballpark for your live tones, uh, Fletcher Monkson curve problem and its solution is you want to dial the bass back 
past the point where you start thinking it sounds like it's not going to be enough and you go to a point where you're actually starting to lose a lot of the bass frequencies on headphones. That is your kind of level which you want to set and then you can go live and uh, that signal will sound really good if it's faithfully reproduced through an amp or faithfully reproduced through a flat response speaker. This brings me on to the next problem with modelling stuff because um, there's, a, there's a further issue with the modellers that again most people aren't really considering. Um, historically a cabinet would have been would have been producing the sound of which the human ear hears. So you you plug into you know your amp, your amp runs through a cabinet or a speaker system. That speaker is designed to push um, push air at you with a certain EQ curve that's built into this basically designed. Sorry, built into the speaker is the wrong wrong way. The speaker is designed to push push the air at you with a certain uh, EQ curve on it, so that you pick it up in a way that your um, you think sounds good. When you use a modeling amp and you use modeling gears, uh, modeling gear, sorry, you're not doing that. You think you're doing that, but you're not. You're actually uh, cre recreating the frequent re frequency response received by whatever microphone that the modeling has been done by. So if I've put on like an, uh, let's say, um, a, an, a cabinet impulse response and that impulse response had like an SM57 in front of a, in front of the um, the cabinet, maybe like a couple of inches away or something like that. the The EQ curve that I am now faithfully reproducing on that impulse response is the EQ curve of the SM57. It is not the EQ curve of the actual amp that was being modelled. It's the it's the EQ curve of that recorded amp. The reason why this matters is that SM57s are pretty good at picking up any kind of any any range of frequencies. So there's actually a lot more in a, quite a lot of impulse responses, there's a lot more bass than you would normally have if you just listened to an amp in a room. Because that's your human ear directly listening to the speaker on the amp, not listening to the signal passed through an SM57 and then being, you know, generated through headphones into your ears or generated through speakers into your ears. So there's all kinds of like stuff going on here that's much more complicated in terms of you might have an EQ curve of your the microphone you, you're using to mic up that amp that you've modelled and then you've also got the EQ curve of the speakers that are then producing that sound. So this is quite complicated in that regard because everything has an EQ curve to some extent. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're not falling into that trap of thinking, well, it sounds good when I just play it on headphones or when I play it at like bedroom volumes and things like that. So it'll be fine when it's when it's live. You've got to completely change your live sounds. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, that I've done a lot is I've really, really got used to using either an EQ pedal or using an EQ built into a modeler when I'm playing live. Anything, basically anything around the 250 and below hertz range, you want to pretty aggressively roll off. And I'm not talking like you don't just shave it a little bit. I'm talking cut all, nearly all of that. And what you'll find is that you will sit in a mix on a live gig much better. This, however, does also bring up another problem. And that problem is... Well, if you record your live gigs, um, let's say you've got um, uh, some kind of laptop set up so that you can do a, a live session straight from the desk mix or something like that. The desk mix is always going to then have a guitar which just have, has no low end on it because then, you know, you've deliberately got rid of that because you know you're going to be playing loud to an audience. And that is why there's always some going to be some kind of disparity between those two, unless it's incredibly well set up as a live um, performance. And you've got like proper, very, very uh, good studio engineers working on that live mix in tandem with, a, um, you know, the, the mix that you're recording. And those two things are very, very difficult to manage in two different ways. So f the reality is... Um, don't aim for the recording to be uh, a perfect sound unless you have the lots and lots of money to burn and you're in a professional setting when you're doing a live recorded album that's also being played live to an audience. You're always going to get some kind of EQ compensation there because those two things are never going to line up the way you want. What you want to do is make sure the audience has a really good gig. And particularly at small venues that like maybe the, the sound guides aren't particularly uh, clued up. 
You don't want to just be pushing loads of base response for no reason. This also becomes a problem with any kind of um, flat response speaker in particular. So this is the last thing I want to talk about today. If you have a flat response speaker, which I do, I've got one of the Laney um, FR FR caps, which are fantastic. But again, that speaker has no problem in uh, outputting bass frequencies. Whereas if I plug my modelers into like a Fender um, Deluxe Reverb or something like that, that amp doesn't produce as much bass frequency because it's not designed to just faithfully reproduce all the low end. Whereas the FRFR speaker will produce the low end if you tell it to produce a low end. So you've got to, again, this is why your cuts in that range have to be so aggressive. So I'm hearing a lot of people complaining about like, you know, oh, my, my head rush speaker or my Laney speaker are, um, they're really booming. That is user error. It is not to do with the app. It is completely user error. And you need to get used to dialing in your live tones completely differently to how you dial in everything else. Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know if it is.